If you're studying for your ATPL exams and need a little bit of help with meteorology, then hopefully this series will help with a few of those elements you can't quite get your head around. Hi, I'm Grant and welcome to the first in a new series all about meteorology. Meteorology and the weather in general is a hugely important part of aviation and it has a huge impact on our lives day to day as pilots. There's also lots of rules and regulations set around how bad the weather can be and still fly, so it's very important that we understand how it works. In this first class we're going to be taking a look at the atmosphere as a whole and then over the next few classes we'll dive a bit deeper into each of the individual elements that make up our atmosphere. The atmosphere contains a mixture of gases mainly consisting of 98% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, with the remaining 1% being other trace gases and water vapour. The atmosphere has many different layers uh, with different properties that kind of looks like this. They've got the tropopause, uh, the troposphere, then the tropopause, the stratosphere, then the stratopause, the mesosphere, then the mesopause, and then above that you have the thermosphere. The layers are mainly defined in terms of what happens to the temperatures in the different layers. You can see it starts to reduce and then the line waves around as we increase in altitude. First down near the Earth's surface is the troposphere. In this layer, temperature reduces with increasing altitude up until that level which is known as the tropopause which has an average height of about 36,000 feet or 11 kilometers. The true height of the tropopause will change throughout the year and by latitude. At the North Pole in the winter, for example, the air all compresses down and contracts. So the level of the tropopause can be down as low as eight kilometers. And conversely at the equator in the summer, the air expands out and the level of tropopause can expand up towards about 18 kilometers. We spend almost all of our lives in the troposphere, so it's where most of the weather occurs as well. It's uh, where most of the water vapour is, so it's the most important for us in terms of meteorology. The next level as we climb up is known as the stratosphere, which extends from the tropopause up to around a 50 kilometer uh, altitude. This layer is characterised by the stop in temperature reduction and as we rise up through the stratosphere the temperature can either be steady or it can actually increase. The reason for this is due to the presence of ozone which is an oxygen 3 molecule and this basically absorbs UV radiation from the sun and it projects that heat out and heats up the surrounding air to the point where the temperature doesn't drop anymore and can actually heat up. The end point of the stratosphere is the stratopause. And at this point, the temperature starts again to reduce with altitude because there is no more ozone present. This continues to drop all the way down until the mesopause, which is located around 80 kilometers. And at this point, we're in the final layer, which is known as the thermosphere, where the temperature again starts to increase as we rise up the altitude levels. It's difficult to define an end point for the thermosphere because the um, outermost layer kind of blends into the surrounding space. There's no definitive line where there's suddenly an atmosphere. It's a very um, fluid sort of change from the space to our atmosphere. In the thermosphere, we also have the ionosphere, um, which is very important for radio navigation. It's a layer which effectively bounces radio signals back down to Earth. This allows for radio signals to travel farther, but it's kind of more a topic for radio navigation, not that important in meteorology. So because the atmosphere is constantly changing from day to day and depending on the time of year, all of aspects of the atmosphere, such as temperature, pressure and density, also change as well. So we use the international standard atmosphere for calculations and uh, a baseline and then we make small variations to this depending on the day's conditions and it looks like this there's a mean sea level temperature of 15 degrees celsius there's a mean sea level pressure of 1013.25 hectopascals 
There's a mean sea level density of 1.225 kilograms per meter cubed. Temperature lapse rate is 1.98 degrees per thousand feet or two degrees per thousand feet, practically speaking, up to the tropopause. And at the tropopause, the temperature remains constant, minus 56.5 degrees Celsius. The tropopause is located at 36,090 feet, or for practical purposes, you can just say 36,000 feet. There's a pressure lapse rate of a 27 foot for every hectopascal drop. So as we uh, increase in altitude by 27 feet, we'll see this pressure here reduced by one hectopascal. The density lapse rate is non-linear and it's quite hard to define, but we can say that roughly at 22,000 feet, the air is 50% as dense. I think it's 0 0.6 roughly. Um, so it's not exactly, but it's close enough. And at 40,000 feet, it's 25%. Again, I think it's 0 0.3 kilograms per meter cubed. So it's not exact, but it's close enough. And if we have deviations from the ISA atmosphere, it's usually defined as a temperature deviation. So you would say an ISA deviation of plus or minus degrees. So if at sea level, it was 12 degrees, that would be a ISA minus three kind of day. So another quick example of ISA deviations at an altitude of 30,000 feet, the temperature is minus 37. What is the ISA deviation? So normally you've got to, well, basically you've got to find out the normal temperature at 30,000 feet in the ISA atmosphere compared to this and find out what the deviation is. So let's, we can do this very simply. We've got 15 degrees is standard at sea level. We're at 30,000 feet. We're going to drop by the temperature lapse rate, which is two degrees per thousand feet. So that's two degrees per thousand feet. There's 30 of them. So we know that it reduces. So it's going to be 15 minus 60, and that's going to equal minus 45 degrees Celsius in ISA conditions. That's not the case today. Today it is 30 minus 37. So it's actually warmer by eight degrees. So we can say that the temperature is ISA plus eight. Nice and easy. So there you go, a very short class. So we're just gonna summarize. We've got a few layers of the atmosphere. We've got the troposphere, the stratosphere, the mesosphere, and the thermosphere, all separated by the relevant pauses, tropopause, stratopause, and mesopause. Um, they're mainly defined about what happens to the temperature. So in the troposphere, the temperature reduces with altitude until reaching the tropopause, which is normally located at 36,000 feet. Then the temperature will either stay constant or start to rise slightly. That's because in the stratosphere we have ozone, which absorbs heat and then radiates it back out, warming the surrounding air. Once we reach the stratopause, about 50 kilometers up, the ozone is no longer present. So again, we start to reduce in temperature until we reach the mesopause, which is about 80 kilometers up. And then at this point, the sun, um, the effect of the sun is actually quite prevalent and it heats up the air quite and the thermosphere continues up until an undefined point it's hard to uh, put a number on we also have the ice atmosphere which we just talked about um, these are the various figures temperature pressure density temperature lapse rate pressure lapse rate and tropopause um, I won't go through them because I just did it and um, noting importantly that there's no ice value for humidity Humidity is very dependent on the location that we're in. If we're by the sea, it's going to be a lot more humid than if we're in the middle of the desert, for example. But it plays a very large role in meteorology, as we'll see in some future classes. So as I said in the intro, we'll spend the next few classes basically looking at each of these elements in a bit more detail and um, before moving on to the real weather-related stuff in around five, four or five classes time.